Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today on Around Kansas, join us for a story about Kansas and its many sunflowers. Then join us for a story about meadowlarks, their singing, and their habitat. Next, we'll have a poem from Ron Wilson, and we'll end with a video about the life of R. Lee Ermey, Gunny, and his connection to Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Ah, uh, well, hello again. It's Wednesday. I'm Frank, and this is Around Kansas. This is the show that talks about Kansas and why it's a great place to live, work, play, and, of course, come visit. Because uh, we have a lot of attractions here. People get the wrong idea out of state that it's all flat and Matt Dillon is running uh, Dodge City, Kansas. <laughs> it's not true. Of course, Matt Dillon was a fictional character. He didn't really exist out there in Dodge City, Kansas. Speaking of Western Kansas, as you know, I do this part of the show from Topeka. And Deb Goodrich, my co-host, is out in Western Kansas. Uh, and they've had some dust storms out there. We got to see some footage of, I mean, incredible dust that was blowing. It was almost back to the Dust Bowl days. And so it's been kind of a really strange spring here in Kansas. The western part of the state has been very dry and warm. And here in the eastern part of the state, of course, it's been cold and rainy and wondering, people wondering if the summer's ever going to come. It reminds me of a, of a song out of... Uh, the Broadway show Carousel called June is Busting Out All Over. Uh, anyway, uh, this is the first of, or the second of May already. So uh, do you remember doing May Day baskets? A year ago, uh, Deb and I talked about this. And remember, as a kid in school, we'd make May baskets. And then you'd uh, fill them with maybe little candies and little flowers, maybe dandelions, because that was about all that was blooming at the time. And then we'd uh, take them and hang them on the front door of our friends' houses and knock on the door and run. Anyway, it was a fun time for uh, May Day. Other things, of course, in May, and if uh, pardon me for having to use notes, but I'm old. So anyway, of course, coming up on, on the 5th is not only Cinco de Mayo, it is this year the running of the Kentucky Derby. So wow, what a day it's going to be May 5th. Uh, 13th, of course, is Mother's Day. Uh, next to Christmas, the biggest holiday that, that we have for the year. And, uh, well, if you're in Canada watching this, you'll, you'll like to know and know that the 21st is Victoria Day in Canada. And, of course, the 28th is Memorial Day for the Memorial Day weekend. So a lot of stuff coming up in the merry month of May. Uh, we've got some good stories today. You remember Gunny? Well, he recently passed away, and we did a story on him uh, some time ago, but we're going to repeat that on today's show simply because, um, well, he recently passed away. Um, we also have uh, a, a couple other really great stories. We've got some good stories today, so stay with us, and we'll take a look at them after you see these. Tarwater Farm and Home has been family owned and operated since its beginning in 1978. What you need for farm and agriculture, lawn and garden, clothing and footwear, and so much more. You'll be surprised at what you'll find in this huge store. They have what you need and lots of it. So come take a look. You'll discover that customer service is first and foremost. Always has been with the Tarwaters. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. 
Fort Wallace was the fightingest fort in the West. Fossils, Indians, soldiers, scouts, wagons, trails, pioneers, stories. Discover the story of Fort Wallace and the people who served here, the people who fought here, the people who settled here. Wallace County, where the past is present. My name is Karen Cope and I have multiple sclerosis. I heard about the stem cell research with the Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Before we decided to do that, I had cognitive testing done. After the stem cells, um, I had the cognitive testing completed again, and the results indicated that I had a six-point increase in my cognitive abilities. It was like somebody had taken Windex and washed all the fog off my brain, and so I had the concrete validated information that stem cells work. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Welcome to Kansas Gateway to Sunflowers line our roadsides and fields, dot the pastures, dress up the fence lines. The sunflower state is blooming. According to the Kansas State Historical Society, long before statehood, the sunflower began to develop a connection with Kansas. Traders on the Santa Fe Trail commented on the flower's presence. Stephen Long's expedition through Kansas in 1820 documented birds feeding on the flower's seeds. Early settlers burned the stalks for fuel and fed the seeds to their poultry. Soon after statehood, Kansans began to suggest the state officially adopt the flower. The Capitol Square is surrounded by a dense growth of rampant sunflowers, wrote Noble Prentice, editor of the Atchison Champion in 1880. They grow as big, rank, and yellow as if they were 40 miles from a house. The sunflower ought to be made the emblem of our state. Kansas delegates to the Grand Army of the Republic Convention in St. Louis in 1887 displayed the sunflower as their emblem. The Newton Daily Republican suggested in response to the favorable reception that Kansas should be called the Sunflower State. However, the sunflower was not highly regarded by all. An 1895 law called the sunflower a noxious weed that should be destroyed. Other Kansans appreciated the flower's hardiness and endurance. Kansans who attended rodeos in Colorado Springs in 1901 displayed the sunflower as a badge. It presented a pleasing scene, unique and attractive to every citizen of the sunflower state. George P. Morehouse, state senator from Council Grove, recalled, Our hearts swelled with pride, and our thoughts and words fondly dwelt upon the resources, traditions, and triumphs of the state we all love so much. That occasion suggested the sunflower as our state flower. Heinen Brothers, a fourth generation Northeast Kansas farm family, knows how tough farming can be. Farmers helping farmers. Heinen Brothers Ag, selling and servicing crop protection products, fertilizer, anhydrous ammonia, cover crops, quality aerial and ground application. Call today to learn about our extended term financing program. 800-760-4964 HeinenBrothersAg.com This is one of my favorite bits that I make. The name I give this bit is a derby bit. I had a roan head horse that was running through the bridle with the chain bit and I made this bit here. It, it, it really worked good on that horse. I sent this bit to Donnie McNeese, who breaks in cattle for Jeff Smith and Ike's Cox. And I said, ride this bit on a lot of horses, see how you get along with it. They did. He said, bull, that's really a good bit. Fits a lot of horses. Then I give this bit to my good friend, Brent Wright, who I make bits for. And I said, see how this bit will work on a reining horse. I call him up a couple months later I said, Brent, how you getting along with that bit? And he said, good. He said, you don't need it right this minute, do you? And I said, no. He said, good, because I'm down here in Texas, and I just want a big fraternity riding that bit. 
And when Brent got home, he gave me the buckle that he won the fraternity with. I'm, I'm really proud of that buckle that Brent Wright gave it to me and also that he got along so good with my bit. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Buffalo Bill Cody earned his legendary title in Oakley. Bring the family and come celebrate Oakley's pioneering history and unique geography at two sites, the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center and the Fick Fossil Museum. Cody's statue marks his achievements and welcomes visitors to the Cultural Center. The Fick Fossil Museum houses world-class fossils and artifacts. You'll find Oakley at the hub of U.S. Highways 83 and 40 and I-70. Stop for the legend. Stay for the day. Discover Oakley. This segment brought to you by the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center in Western Oakland. Western Meadowlark was designated the official state bird of Kansas in 1937. A familiar songbird of open country across the western two-thirds of the continent, the meadowlark is in the same family as blackbirds and orioles. Adults have a black and white striped head, long pointed bill, yellow cheeks, bright yellow throat, and a distinctive black V on the breast. The western meadowlark is often seen perched on fence posts in grasslands and agricultural areas, singing its distinct seven-note melody. Their flute light song usually ends with three descending notes. Male western meadowlarks have a complex two-phase primary song that begins one to six pure whistles and descends into a series of one to five gurgling warbles. Males develop a repertoire of up to a dozen songs and may switch the songs they sing in response to an intruder. When chasing compete, uh, competing males or responsive females, male western meadowlarks give a hurried, excited flight song of short space whistles and warbles. Although western meadowlarks seldom sing more than 10 to 12 songs, their eastern counterparts exhibit a much larger repertoire of 50 to 100 song variations. Western meadowlarks forage on the ground and beneath soil for insects, grain, and weed seeds. It's estimated that at least 65 to 70 percent of their diet consists of beetles, cutworms, caterpillars, grasshoppers, spiders, sowbugs, and snails. They also nest on the ground, constructing a cup of dried grasses and bark. This nest may be open or have a partial or full grass roof, or even a grass entry tunnel several feet long. Western meadowlark predators include hawks, crows, skunks, coyotes, raccoons, and weasels. Western meadowlarks are still abundant, but declining throughout their range. They are protected non-game species. Welcome to Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center, right here in Oakley, Kansas on I-70 at exit 76. I-70, after all, is America's Main Street, and we're right here on Main Street for you. Now that I'm an Oakley resident, I still come in almost every day, and I sit and listen to the conversations of the people around me. You know, the guys who are talking about the big elf they just bagged, or the folks who are taking their kid to college for the first time. People just traveling up and down the highway. Real people, just like you and me and they find just what I find here, real people to serve them. There's history, there's scenery. We hope you'll stop and see us soon. Welcome to Oakley. With nearly 100 years of broadcasting excellence, Wren Radio is now live on the internet playing hit songs of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Join Jack Diamond, Matt Collins, Les Glenn, Frankie C., Antonio Barber, Wings Callahan, and the real Don Steele for some of the best music ever recorded. Hear it at wrendigitalmedia.com or get the Wren Oldies Radio app in Play Store or App Store. And tell Alexa, good times and great oldies on Wren Internet Radio. 
Hi, I'm Kim Mandarin with Hardy Insurance. I'm here to help you with all of your farm and ranch needs. When it comes to protecting your operation and your family, you need a name you can trust at a price you can afford. Call me today or visit hardyaviationins.com. Welcome to the Jerry Thomas Gallery and Collection, where we showcase my renowned frontier military and Native American artifacts. Behind me you see a touch of fall. We put together not only the beauty of Micah High Walking, who is the first graduate of West Point of the Northern Cheyenne people and a dear friend, but also a Hudson's Bay blanket that I have here in the gallery. The unique opportunity that I was able to have was we unveiled this painting and surprised Micah at Custer Battlefield, a true honor. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas Farmers. So many families take these big family trips where the kids all pile into the car, mom and dad drive, and they get out of the driveway before the kids say, are we there yet? Well, there's also the issue of coming home to the ranch. This poem I wrote based on a true story. It's titled, My Vocation Affects My Vacation, or The Trip. We were all driving home from a nice family trip, dog tired but happy with smiles on our lips. We've been driving for hours on the big highway and we thankfully turned onto the ranch driveway. We were all looking forward to the end of the ride when suddenly there were signs of concern that I spied. It's not what I wanted for my welcome back because alongside the road I could see some cow tracks and by the road was manure as I looked about and I knew what it meant. The cows had got out. What a lousy welcome home to receive. While I was trying to get home, the cows were trying to leave. Instead of relaxing to unpack and unwind, we had all the cows to hurry and find. The horses were still in the corral, at least, so we saddled up quickly to track down the beasts. It was easy to follow the tracks on their way to the neighbors where they'd got into his hay. They'd tromped through his garden, got into his shed, and ate the alfalfa stored there to be fed. So we rounded them up and drove them back home and into a pen where they'd no longer roam. Then we rode around the perimeter fence till we, till we found the spot where those maverick cows went. A tree had blown down on the wire while we're gone and let the cows loose so that they could go on. So we gathered our tools and got the fence mended and went home thankful this long day had ended. I complained to my wife about this turn of events, from vacation to having to chase cows and fix fence. I said, it's unfair the cows caused this extra work to do. She just smiled and said, I guess the cows wanted a trip too. Happy trails. Welcome to Our Bar B, 8,000 plus square feet western store with something for everyone in the family. We have boots, belts, hats, jeans, anything you could want to outfit you and your horse. Come visit our line of saddles. We have 400 plus new and used saddles in stock. We offer tack, grooming supplies, head stalls, breast collars, you name it, we've got it for you and your horse. That's R Bar B, one mile east of Highway 4 on Northeast 39th. R Bar B, where Western is a way of life. I'm Scott Thelman, and this is Juniper Hill Farms. Even though my parents weren't farmers, they bought this beautiful farm north of Lawrence in 1999. In 2010, I started growing vegetables on this land. Today, Juniper Hill Farms sells produce to wholesalers, grocers, and restaurants, and is focused on growing high-quality food that everyone can afford. Watch my story and the stories of other young Kansas food producers at kansaslivingmagazine.com slash meetafarmer. Clyde Sutton, Nest City, Kansas. Lived on this place all my life. About a year and a half ago, got to where I couldn't saddle a horse. The pain was terrible. Read about stem cell. First it wasn't for me, then they started doing neck and back. Went and had it done. As you can see, I saddled a horse. I'm still building fence. Love to shoot a shotgun rifle, and I'm able to participate. Not like I used to, but nevertheless I can do the things I used to do, and life is good. Heinen Brothers, a fourth generation Northeast Kansas farm family, knows how tough farming can be. Farmers helping farmers. Heinen Brothers Ag, selling and servicing crop protection products, fertilizer, anhydrous ammonia, cover crops, quality aerial and ground application. Call today to learn about our extended term financing program, 800-760-4964. HeinenBrothersAg.com. SureCrop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. 
we predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of anything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is suretcropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at suretcropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. And brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. It seems that we've had a lot of folks pass away lately, um, a lot of obituaries in the news, but we can't ignore when some of these amazing folks leave us, and um, it's good to look at their legacies. Um, we touched on David Derry and Linda Thompson a couple of weeks ago, and today we say goodbye to R. Lee Ermey, Gunny. Um, what an amazing character. You just could not make him up. And I'll never forget walking into the home of my friend Phil Schreier in Alexandria, Virginia a few years ago. And there was a photo on his refrigerator of he and Gunny playing golf. And I'm like, wow! And he's like, yeah, yeah, we're good friends. And what an ambassador for Kansas and our military history. And so let's say goodbye and look back at the career of Arlie Ermey, one of our native sons. On April 5th, 2018, R. Lee Ermey, the gunny, passed away from complications of pneumonia. After more than 25 years in the business, Gunny was one of the most successful actors in film and television, having starred or appeared in over 60 feature films. His numerous roles in feature film include Switchback, starring opposite Dennis Quaid and Danny Glover, Dead Man Walking, Seven, and Leaving Las Vegas. He performed numerous voiceover roles, which span from The Simpsons to Family Guy to all three Toy Story films. Toy Story 3 just became the highest grossing animated film of all time. Gunny served 11 years in the Marine Corps, two of which were spent as a drill instructor at the Marine Corps Recruit Depot in San Diego. Gunny arrived in Vietnam in 1968 and spent 14 months attached to Marine Wing Support Group 17. He did two tours in Okinawa. Rising to the rank of Staff Sergeant, he was medically retired for injuries received. Using his GI Bill benefits, he enrolled at the University of Manila in the Philippines, where he studied drama. Francis Ford Coppola was filming Apocalypse Now in the area and cast Ermey in a featured role. Thus, an icon was born. In 2002, he received an honorary promotion to Gunnery Sergeant E7 by Commandant James L. Jones, becoming the first retiree in the history of the Marines to be promoted. Gunny hosted his own show for the History Channel called Mail Call, which ran for eight seasons and 100 episodes. It focused on military technology, past, present, and future. His most recent show, Lock and Load with Arlie Ermey on the History Channel, can now be seen on H2 and History International. In late October of 2013, Gunny released his new book, Gunny's Rules, How to Get Squared Away Like a Marine, Part Self-Help, Part Autobiographical, peppered with stories from his interesting life in the Marine Corps and interesting stories of the making of Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket. Gunny was born March 24, 1944 in Emporia, Kansas. His manager said, It is extremely difficult to truly quantify all the great things this man has selflessly done for and on behalf of our military men and women in uniform. Gunny was buried in Arlington National Cemetery with full military honors. Semper Fi, Gunny. Semper Fi.
Got to go. See you next week. I'm Frank, and Deb and I'll see you somewhere around Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream.